What's up, my physics people? We're going to do a little Ed puzzle here on this worksheet. I can't put this worksheet online as a Google Doc because a lot of things disappear. Uh, so you may see it on there as a PDF, or me. I might not even put it on there. We might just do it as a uh, just an Ed puzzle like this. Uh, so let's just take a look. This is about graphs, at distance over time and velocity over time graphs. It's also about what acceleration is and constant velocity and, and what they look like on a graph. So let's take a look at this first one right here. I'm going to try to zoom in a little bit so you can see as well as I can. All right, so right here, describe the motion of the truck over time. My first question is, do you feel like this truck has a constant velocity? All right, the answer is no. Here is the velocity, all right? So it's increasing at a certain amount. And then when we get to this point, the line becomes less steep. So the uh, velocity is not constant. This truck is speeding up and speeding up and speeding up. And then when we get to this point, it's still accelerating, right? But just not accelerating at the same amount. So this shows acceleration, and the acceleration is not constant. Question number two, what do you think this graph would look like if it showed an object constantly accelerating or accelerating at a steady rate? What do you think it would look like? Well, it would look like this. It would just look like a straight line. That's a constant acceleration, okay? This car is accelerating. And it's still accelerating here, but just not at the same rate. Let's take a look at this graph right here. What is the average velocity from 300 to 500 seconds? Now, I don't really expect you to know this off the top of your head, but um, velocity is equal to distance divided by time. I do expect you to know that, okay? So velocity is equal to distance divided by time. So... It says, what is the average velocity from 300 to 500 seconds? So we look down here. And see, here's 300 seconds, right? At 300 seconds, we're going 10 meters per second. And then at 500 seconds, we're going 20 meters per second. Okay, here's our velocity. So really, the average velocity would look like that. Does that make sense? It would be a straight line from there to there. Now, this straight line could show us the average acceleration. But what are we going to do with the average velocity? I'll tell you what we can do. We can take this, and we can say... How much distance is covered from 300 to 500 seconds, all right? And we can divide this up into a triangle right here, a square right there. Try to forget this line where I was showing you the constant acceleration. And then a square right here. So we have these three different areas triangle, a rectangle, and a square. And you may say, Mr. Perkins, <clears throat> why are you drawing shapes? All right. Well, one thing that you learned in class or that you saw on the internet is that the area under the line, okay, the area under the line on a velocity over time graph is equal to the distance traveled. So what we can do <clears throat> is since velocity is equal to distance divided by time, we can look under the line here, the area under the line from 300 to 500 seconds, and we can find out how far it traveled. And then we can say, okay, it traveled this far, and then we can see that it's from 300 to 500 seconds, we can see that 200 seconds has gone by. So I'm going to break this up. First, let's add up the area of this rectangle. 
I mean, this triangle, sorry. All right, so this is 100 wide. See this 100, 300 to 400? It's 100 by 10. 100 times 10 is 1,000, and half of that is 500. So the area of the triangle is 500. I'm going to assume that you remember that the area of a triangle is 1 half base times height, right? That's how I got the 500. Let's look at this little rectangle right here. This rectangle right here, I'm going to shade in a little bit. Let's find the area of that. It is 100 wide, see from 400 to 500, it's 100 wide by 10 high. So 100 times 10, what is the area covered right there? That's right, it's 1,000. And then I want you to calculate the area of this big square, the area of this big square. All right. It is 10 by 200, so that's 2,000. So if we add up all of this stuff, if we add up all this stuff, 500 plus 1,000 plus 2,000, we get that a total of 3,500 meters was covered in how many seconds from 300 to 500? In 200 seconds. So what was the average velocity? The average velocity in that time was 3,500 divided by 200. And I'm just guessing that is 17.5. But we'll punch that in on the calculator to make you feel better about it. 3,500 divided by 200 equals 17.5. The velocity was 17.5 meters per second. That was the average velocity during this time. All right, let's take a look at this graph. If this is a velocity over time graph, what is the average acceleration of the bicycle between two and four seconds? All right. Acceleration is equal to change in velocity over time. Okay, so we're going to work this together. The average acceleration, all right, this is velocity and this is time. What's the, what is the average acceleration between two and four seconds? So at two seconds, we're going one meters per second, okay. And at four seconds, we're going three meters per second. So what is the change in velocity? The change in velocity is two meters per second. How much time goes by? From two to four seconds, two seconds goes by. So what is the average acceleration? during this area, one meter per second every second. Another way to put that is you would say one meter per second squared, all right? So now I'm gonna ask you a problem exactly like this. What is the average acceleration from two seconds to seven seconds, okay? What is the average acceleration from two seconds to seven seconds? Okay. Now, you can just pretend, since we're finding the average, you can just pretend that the line is drawn like this because none of this stuff matters anymore. We're only talking about the average between here and here, okay? So now I want you to do this formula just like I just did it, and I'm gonna ask you for the answer, okay? What is the answer, okay? Well, I'm gonna do it, ready? The change in velocity, at first we're going one meter per second, and then at seven seconds, we're going, whoop, three meters per second. So three minus one is two meters per second still. 
But how much time has gone by? Oh, one, two, three, four, five seconds has gone by. Five seconds. So two over five, it's 0.4 meters per second squared. I hope you got that one right. 0.4 meters per second per second. All right, let's keep rolling. Don't worry, this is your first one. This is your first rodeo, okay? Let's take a look at this one. In the graph above, how far has the object gone after 40 seconds? What is the acceleration of the object at 50 seconds, okay? Let's do this problem. How far has the object gone after 40 seconds? All right. We're looking at the graph here. Here's 40 seconds. Now remember, I told you that if you have a velocity over time graph, the area under the line here is equal to the distance traveled. So I'm asking you right now, how far has it gone? Okay, now here's the way you solve it. You make this a triangle, and then you add up this area, and then you make this a square, and then you add up this area from 0 to 40 seconds, okay? Let's look at the triangle here. It is 20 by 40, so 1 half 20 times 40, that would be 400. So 400 meters there. And then let's look at this one. This one's 20 by 40, so 20 times 40 here, it's 800 meters. So 1,200 meters is the answer you should have gotten. If you're lost, if you're missing these, don't worry. Just do your best. We're going to work on some more, all right? Okay, the next question here was, what is the acceleration of the object at 50 seconds. All right, you don't know how to do that yet. Here's what you would do. You would go to 50 seconds and you would look at the slope of this line, okay? And the slope of the line, since this is a velocity over time graph, is equal to the change in velocity. So the slope of the line the slope of the velocity line is going to be equal to the acceleration. And you can derive that. So if we found the slope of this line, let's, I'm, I'm roughing it out here. It looks like it goes up 40, from 40 to 80. 40 by 10 goes up 40 over 10. So it looks like it's going to be 4 meters per second per second. Let's keep rolling. Let's try something else. Uh, you're not ready for this one, all right? Oh, yeah, no, no, we have done this one. All right, here we go. A runner maintains a constant velocity of 2.8 meters per second. At t equals zero, he starts at point zero. So this is a double line graph problem, all right? So this person is going to run at 2.8 meters per second, for t seconds. All right. Another runner starts at the same time, but with a five meter head start. So the other runner is going to be running at 2.1 meters per second for t seconds, but they've already gone five meters. Remember, this is y is equal to mx plus b. The, this is the slope, time is the x, and b is the y-intercept. So I want you to solve for t here real quick. All right, so what is t equal to? All right, we're going to say 2.8t minus 2.1t equals 5. 0.7t equals 5. t equals 5 divided by 0.7. We'll take a calculator. 5 divided by 0 0.7. I mean, we know it's going to be 7 point something. 7.14. T is equal to 7.14 seconds. All right. Nice. Next thing I would ask you is to say how far would either one of these cars go in set, or either one of these runners go in 7.14 seconds? This would be the easier one to choose. Tell me. Okay. Well, you're right. It would go 2.8 times 7.14 seconds. If 
That's going 2.8 meters per second for 7.14 seconds. Take our time, just say times 2.8. 20 meters down the track, that's where the collision would be, or that's where the catch would be. All right, let's try one more. We're almost done here. We've done a long ed puzzle. I hope you're learning from this. This is a learning experience, okay? So, yeah, I didn't expect you to know how to do all these. What is the person's average speed? I'm going to go ahead and ask you that. The average speed from 0 to 0.4 seconds. All right, here's 0.4 seconds. We can see that they went this far. So if we look, I'm going to say that's 78 centimeters, since it says centimeters. So it looks like they went about 78 centimeters in 0.4 seconds. So we could find their average speed. 78 divided by 0.4 equals 195 centimeters per second or, or 1.95 meters per second. All right, hope you learned something. Peace out and stuff.